I am super excited for this conversation because what worked in 2015, 16 doesn't necessarily work today. Well, I guess a lot of it works today, but we really got to drill down and understand where things are going and some of the data that Amazon is giving us. And so how you can have a better approach from a funnel end. Uh, I'm excited to have this conversation with Stephen Pope from my Amazon guys. So Stephen, thank hey, you Kevin. for coming back to the Maximizing E-Commerce podcast. It's, it's my pleasure. You have some of the greatest content on international and it's a pleasure to be on. Well, thank you. I, I certainly appreciate that. And you have some of the best content on catalog, funnels, probably about every other topic other than international. I have, let's, let's, let's put it this way. I have an opinion on everything. All right. But you always bring a lot of really good data and really good information. And one of the things I noticed you started talking about is funnel. And I've heard people for years talking about you know Amazon funnel, which you know there, there's basics of it that really haven't changed but they're, they are starting to give us more data. And so what do we do with all this? You know, how do we look at it? And so um, I'm excited to get into this, but just real quickly for anyone that's not familiar with you, um, who are you and what do you do? So I don't think anybody cares who I am. I think they just care about the funny things I say, right? But I, my name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. 300 person agency, 300 clients. Uh, we do everything full service for PBC, SEO design and catalog. And so, so what we're going to be talking about today, this, this marketing funnel and why this matters, um, I'm calling this the ICAP marketing funnel. So I'm coining the term and I love coining terms in the Amazon sphere, right? So there's, there's this nice data in the search query performance report. And this data has been out since March. Here, here we are recording June 29th. And people still don't realize the value of this, this data source. So I've been talking about this source for months, but I've never talked about it in this one way. And I think it's going to be eye-catching. I think it's going to create some dialogue. And so that's why I think it's such a good topic. So ICAP, ICAP Marketing Funnel, impressions, clicks, add to carts, and purchases. Mm -hmm. Four metrics, which should, in theory, make a tornado in your marketing funnel, right? So as you go from the top of the funnel, impressions, and as you go farther down into the funnel, it should get smaller and smaller. But some keywords on your brand are not a tornado. They're a pyramid. And instead of getting thinner as they go down the funnel, they actually get fatter. Well, depending on whether you have a tornado or a pyramid, there are some actions you can take today. So I'm excited to talk about the ICAP marketing funnel. Okay, yeah, so th th this is interesting. One of the things we talked about before we hit the record button is, I didn't even realize this, is that Add to Carts is now available. So if you have a Shopify store, you're familiar with your Add to Carts. If you have, you know, off, anything that's like off a marketplace, generally you've always been able to know about add to carts. If you have WordPress, WooCommerce, BigCommerce, Shopify, ClickFunnels, Kartra, you know. Kev, Kevin is the, at, like the funnel guru guys. Like, I mean, just <laughs> the list that he just gave out, I couldn't do that, right? But, but what's really interesting is like, I used to do e-commerce website stuff before I became the Amazon guy. And and you could use like personalized engines like MyBuys and some other tools to send emails after somebody add to cart and then left. Well, that doesn't really exist on, on Amazon today. But if you have this data down to the keyword level and, and we've got a use case and, and we're going to talk through the use case today and explain like how, how this worked for me. And, and in less than seven weeks, I basically quadrupled my market share on a, on a specific keyword I was chasing. And so like that's actionable data that you can go and take. Okay, well, let's do this just from a very foundational level. Let's just make sure we're all on the same page with definitions. So you call it the ICAP, which is impressions, clicks, add to carts, which I'm excited that we have this data now because before you never really knew that. Now, I don't know what to do with that on Amazon because you can't send like abandoned cart emails, which some people may not even know what that is. Um, start putting something in the cart on like uh, a major retailer's website or even on Amazon and see if you don't start getting emails and ads for that product. Um, hey, get 10% off. Just come back. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you, like you, the, you'll start noticing this everywhere now if you hadn't noticed it before and then purchase it. So let, let's walk through each of the four. So what, what just the basic standpoints, we're all on the same page. What is an impression? If you see a product on Amazon, 
That is an impression. An impression can be both advertising or organically shown. Mm -hmm. So your PPC tracks impressions. Your organic impressions have historically not been tracked. This is new information that's never been released by Amazon before. Uh, now, now here's, here's the bad news. They are not releasing your impressions at the organic level down to the product or SKU or ASIN level. That doesn't exist. But they are releasing it down to the keyword level across your brand. And, and so this is a really cool report. Kevin's going to put this in the show notes. You guys can check out the search query performance report yourself. You can go in, you can select your brand, you can select the week, which is really neat because not only can you go in here and select a specific week, you can then track your result. One of the most important thing I think people forget when they, when they work on their Amazon listing is they, 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 you know, they understand best practices or they hear a guru talk about one thing or another. No, just, just real quick. We're, we're looking yeah. in brand analytics right now. Search query performance report, which is a currently beta on in Amazon brand analytics. So you would need to be brand registered to get this data. Co correct. So you need a trademark. And, and, and I filed more than a thousand trademarks over the last couple of years. And, and if you're not using a trademark or brand registry on Amazon, you're not a serious Amazon seller. Just hate to break it to you. But if, if you go into the search query performance report, there's just a conglomerate amount of data in here. And, and for those that are following the video, we, we actually are screen sharing this. And, and you can go in and select a brand. You can select the re reporting week. You can select each week. And so if you want to measure something, Right. So like, I think this is the thing that most Amazon sellers are not good at. There's this massive opportunity to measure results. Right. And I'm not just talking sales went up, sales went down. We all have our mobile phone and go in there and go into our mobile app and say, oh, sales are down 3% this week over last week. Oh, well, today was a pretty good run. It's a nice Sunday or a Monday. We're best day of the week for sales. Right. But this is awesome, actionable data that shows you what you can do. So, so just to kind of, you know, prove to you that this works, I'm going to start with the case study and then we're going to go through, uh, you know, line by line, we're going to work our way down the marketing funnel here and explain it. And because Kevin's the funnel guru, this guy knows everything about funnels. He's going to, he's going to ask me some questions that I haven't thought of before because, and this is why we chose this topic because I really think Kevin's like one of the best funnel guys I know. Well, thank you. So, so here's an example of a keyword. And the keyword is sage candles for cleansing house. This is definitely a long tail keyword. So long tail keyword. Um, and, and it has 3000 searches a month during the first week that we started this. Mm -hmm. So it's, so it's not a small keyword. It's not a hundred thousand search font keyword, but it's a 3000, right? So it's a sizable. Oh, wow. So, and, and it's a long tail, right? One, two, three, four, five words, sage candles for cleansing house. Within seven weeks, I did the following impressions. I went from a brand share across all of Amazon of 2.75% impressions for this keyword to 7.52 in seven weeks. So basically almost tripled it. So, okay. So uh, of the available inventory of impressions, so the time for people that or the number of times people search for sage candles for cleansing house, that phrase, you went from showing up 2.75% of the time to 7.5% of the time, somewhere in that range when you're looking at this. Correct. Okay. So that's, that's impressions. That's being seen. If we stop there, that would be big enough. Right. Like that is actionable. If we just, if that was the podcast, just impressions, I, I, my product is being seen by more people done. That's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But wait, there's more clicks went from 7.58% to 20%. That means one out of five people that searches sage candles for cleansing house is now clicking on my product. 20%. Isn't that absurd? Okay. So, so now let's get back to the definitions. So we're going from impressions to click. So they see the product somewhere on Amazon, whether it be the search results page, or I'm, I'm assuming this data also includes the, uh, you know, when they see like the other products, you know, uh, on a, a product detail page that somewhere right, along so, there. So if you go them. on Amazon and you type in sage candles for cleansing house like this, Mm -hmm. You're going to see all kinds of sponsored brand ads at top. 
Yep. You're going to see my product come up, sponsor product number one right here. Okay. And, and uh, b- before I go further, what do you notice? Just anything you notice here, Kevin? Uh, it's a lot of sponsored products up at the top. What do you notice about the products offering? How does mine compare to everything else? Um, it looks less like a candle. You nailed it. Okay. So I'm selling a smudge kit and everybody else is selling a candle. Mm. But, but here's the thing, right? So, so, so on this search result, I have one impression right there, a second impression right there, because that's a second ad with highly rated in the, in the section. Notice I also have the Amazon's choice badge for this keyword now. Mm-hmm. I'm not a candle, but I have Amazon's choice for sage candle. Mm. And we scroll down and we finally see my organic result right here. So I've got three impressions on those keywords. So a lot of times people ask this question, should I spend PPC on something I'm organically ranked on? Answer, absolutely. Because I'm now getting multiple people seeing the same product as they scroll by. And and guess what? If they scrolled all the way down to the organic listing and clicked on that after seeing my product two times above there, I'm not paying for that. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting more customers. All right. So we've established that being seen in impressions is more important, is, is, is a good idea. I'm now establishing that getting clicked on is a good idea. Got it. So now people are basically, from a digital standpoint, they've, if you're walking down a mall, you see all these different products everywhere, you're now walking into the store. That's basically the click. And, and that click went from 7.58% to 20%. So, so gigantic increase, almost tripled. Okay. Our, and, and so this is, this is just simply clicking on the listing, right? So I'll, I'm going to pull it back up for those that are visually following us. I'm going to click on the listing now. So now I'm on the listing. Okay. And, and I haven't done anything yet. I've just simply clicked on it. Okay. There's a certain portion of people that are going to leave at this point. And mm-hmm. Amazon tracks all this data. There's also a certain portion of people that are going to hit this nice one-time purchase add to cart button, or if I'm lucky enough, they're going to hit the subscribe and save, Mm -hmm. right? So I've got subscribe and save set up. Uh, This listing also has a pack of three, six, 12, and 100. So I am break even or, or barely making any margin on my three pack. And I sell for 10 bucks. I actually went to market at eight and I worked my way up when they let me get my uh, small and light when they raised those fees, I, I took advantage of that mm. to try and get a squeeze as much margin out of that as I could. Mm-hmm. When this product launched, it was number one in incense for new releases. It's a very successful launch, over 777 product reviews. I've never once asked anybody for a review. I've done zero external traffic of any kind. And I like to do these things or not do those things to prove that the basics still work. All right, so now that we've established this is a successful product, I've never done a photo shoot with it. Uh, You can see there's no no live images of people using a product. That's that's actually something you should do. Um, But I've done all the basics just to prove you can have a successful product without doing some of those things. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to add it to my cart and I click this button. Okay. So now now we're at the the A and the add to cart. And, and, And so if we go look at the tornado, in theory... There should be a higher percentage of impressions with lower clicks and lower add to carts and lower purchases. ICAP, impressions, clicks, add to carts, purchases, right? Mm -hmm. But here's what my data showed. My clicks were higher than my impression count. So in week, in the original week when I first looked at this data, I had a 2.75% impression share and a 7.58 click percentage. So in the world where I had a pyramid, Instead of a tornado, I knew I had an opportunity. A pyramid shows you that the consumer finds your product more relevant than the comp- competition, which means what? It means you need to spend more on traffic, more on PPC, more on SEO. So this product keyword, which is not what I would have thought even relevant to my product, because I'm not selling a sage candle, I'm selling a smudge stick. But the consumer is telling us, I'm more interested in your smudge stick than that candle. I thought I was looking for a candle when I searched Mm -hmm. this term, but in reality, I'm actually looking for your product, Stephen, and I'm going to click on it. Well, 
when we got to the add to carts ratio now, just under 9% of people were adding it to the cart. This is the original week metric. Okay, let's just review for a second here. So impressions that the percentages you're, you're, you're mentioning, which for those trying to follow audio, it's kind of a little harder to follow, but it's percentage of inventory of impressions. Am I understanding that right? So if you say 7.52%, if there's 3000 impressions, you saw 7.52% of that. Is that what that number means? Yes. Yeah, so if we look at the actual data set inside of the search query performance report in okay. here, we've got a data set in front of us. So just under 3000 search volume keyword, the number of search funnel impressions is 154,000. So the difference between a search query volume, 2,900 people typed in the term. That's the query volume. Mm. This is what people normally see in SEO tools like Helium 10. And they type that in and they see it, right? The, the, the impression count, the search funnel impression count is going to be all products that show up for that term. Got it. And so, so uh, 20 products might show up on a page when you first look, when the page first loads. Correct. All 20 of those are counting towards that total count. Okay. Correct. So, so now, somebody's so your percentage of that. So somebody's going to scroll down. They're going to see hundreds of products in their scroll or whatever. They're counting all of those as an impression. So of, of those, I'm getting at least three every time somebody searches the volume. So I'm getting a percentage share of that. So there are 4,200. So sponsored and your organic and your third highly rated. I'm, I'm actually not a hundred percent sure if it's technically an ad or an organic result, to be totally honest, mm. but in the highly rated section, it doesn't say sponsored on the search. Right. So that's but why everyone like, seems to think it's sponsored. Yeah. I, th I think it is sponsored, but I'm not a hundred percent sure, but whatever. <laughs> Appreciate I mean, your honesty. Okay. All right. So, so there are 4,200 brands that show up in the impressions, but of those, I have a brand share of 2.75%. That's the impression share. Okay. As we go down the funnel, we're now at clicks. So there are 2,400 clicks on, on this term every month. Okay. And so that means there's 500 people that searched this, but didn't click on anything. There are 2,400 people that clicked. Of that, I have a 7.58% click share. Got it. So you, your brand had 188 clicks. Correct. And of the, of the 2,481 total clicks out of that total... 1500 or 154,000 impressions. Correct. Total. Okay. Got right. It. And I, and I know this is very data heavy for a podcast, but, but the, you're going to leave this podcast understanding the methodology and that's, that's important. And you're going to understand mm -hmm. the metrics prove what we're talking about. All right. So then as we go down to add to carts, there are 850 people that add this to their cart every month. We started with 2,900 searches. We went down to 2,400 clicks. We're now at 850 add to cart. So that's a tornado, right? We're seeing mm -hmm. less and less people. But disproportionately, my percentage of the tornado became a pyramid. I had more percentage of people adding my product to their cart. 76 people add this product to their cart every month when they search Sage Candles for Cleansing House. 8.94% brand share. So my, my percentage went up and up, okay? So add to cart, so you click the add to cart button. So now we're going to get to purchases, and this is the one that everybody cares about. And, and so this is when I actually physically get the purchase. That means they added it to their cart and they finished it to checkout. So originally, I had a 6.65% per purchase percentage. So that was the first time in our example, my percentage dipped. It went down. This is what normally would make sense um, in, in a regular tornado for a funnel, right? So I had a pyramid and the first three stats, impressions, clicks, and add to carts. Those were a pyramid. And then it became a tornado when it went down to purchases. Well, after seven weeks of focusing on this keyword, I got this up to 18.75%. So essentially, one out of five people click on my product, one out of five people add it to their cart, and one out of five people purchase it. I freaking dominate this keyword. There's almost nothing I could do further to dominate on this keyword. I'm maxing it out. One out of five. That's pretty good. Okay. So, so, so let's just, again, this is just a lot of uh, stuff to consume. So I'm trying to think through like, what are the questions people might have as they're listening to this? So just, just to take a step back to the beginning, impressions of the total number of impressions that are out there, which impressions is going to be a different number here than 
times people search for it because there's lots of impressions for all the different products that show up that are counting every time somebody searches for sage candles for cleansing house. So you, by having multiple placements, you're getting a higher share of impressions and the more likely you are to the top, the more likely you're going to get a higher percentage share there. Clicks Correct. is percentage of times your product was shown that somebody clicked on it, which 7.58 to 20% is still pretty it's a gigantic jump. That, that's a big number. I mean, like, you know, I, I've been to, you know, I, I remember starting out and uh, someone who's still relevant today in the PPC space who's been a speaker at some of my summits had said, uh, you know, as long as it's above about 0.2%, you're good. And so that that's for ad in CTR specifically, though, not accounting for any organic. Right. But e either way, because before we didn't really have the organic data, that's still pretty good. I would I would argue even for organic, you know. As long as it's above one, you're probably not that bad off. Well, it depends. I, I would I would parse that, and I'd say it depends on the volume of the keyword and what it was. But so so if I you know if we data mine this and we go through, and there's so much freaking data in here, you can see all the search query volumes, you can see all the impressions, clicks, add to carts, and purchases, and you can see how you stack up on market share, right? So mm -hmm. this is this is why I tie this into my SEO phase four. It's my newest SEO phase new created in the last 90 days. And we call it the market share SEO phase, right? Mm. And, and so on our previous podcasts, we've talked about SEO and how we go through different phases. You know, you're going to index in certain phases, you're going to rank in other phases. And other times you're focusing on the strike zone and trying to rank it higher. In this particular SEO phase four, it's about market share. So mm -hmm. increasing your market share. So, so now we have a tool that demonstrately tracks this automatically with no effort on your part, you can see if your market share is going up or if it's going down mm -hmm. and you can go from one week to another. So between week 13, this was my starting week. And then I did it on um, week 20. I can then apply the search and see all of these results. So what's interesting is this particular example, the search query volume did go down between week one and week seven, went down from 2,900 down to 2,100. But my market share and all these per, uh, per percentages and all these benefits, all of my stats went up. And being able to close 49 sales a month on one keyword, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Especially right? a keyword you would have, that most people would have probably negated and whatever from an ad standpoint, thinking this is not relevant. Yeah. So, so what I, I think this is the biggest thing that most marketers learn the more experience they get, right? Don't tell the consumer how to use your product. Mm. What, what you may think is a That's limitation so might be a freaking feature, yeah. right? Like, and, and this is a great use case example uh, on every, every component. So what do you think I did to get this impression up? I, I spent more on ads mm -hmm. and then I did things like add it to my title. I'm now oh. calling this product a sage bundles for cleansing house, sage candles for cleansing house right there. Probably don't need to have cleansing house twice, but I was trying to go for the exact match on a couple of keywords and really hit it home. Uh -huh. Right. And, and still, still using a feature, but focus on the keywords. Um, one of the other things I did and, and, and unrelated to the current example, what do you see right there? I put in, I put in some Spanish some into Espanol. my main title, mm -hmm. right? Because like I know everybody at home is thinking, can I put Spanish in my 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 title? And 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 I have proven it works. Wow. And I wouldn't do it on every product, but I I think that this particular well, product. Why might you not do it on every product? What would be the downside? Well, I mean, if you really are trying to push the American made and you start talking in Spanish, eh, it might might be a little fishy, right? If you're selling an American product that you know is ninety percent purchased by you know, U.S. natives probably don't want to suggest to them that there's a Spanish angle to it, right? But in a product like this, where I actually think that my demographic sways to the Spanish persuasion by me putting, well, first of all, the data told me to do this, right? So like, mm. um, so, so, so like if one of the biggest criticisms that I have for marketers is that they, they think like politicians. They're like, I need to cast the biggest tent possible and get the most votes. Well, if you make a product for everybody, you have no customers, full stop, right? And, and so like, 
the data right here on screen, slot number four, search query, Amazon is saying this is an important keyword for my brand with 257 searches on the Spanish. So it's significantly smaller. But I went from you know a, a brand share of 2.6% brand share and increased that one as well. Right. So like this isn't just a one off use case example. I just I just shared this one because it's it's clear as night and day. There's no if, ands or buts. And it's gigantic and it's a big keyword. But I've replicated this dozens of times now. I've also, you know, some of the other things I did is I put it into uh, the A plus content. So I snuck it in right at the top of my A plus content module right here. <laughs> Right? Yeah, at the top there, it says age of sage, or sage candles. For sage cleansing candles house. for cleansing house right here, right? I have no Which, supporting for pictures. folks not watching this. This is not a candle, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, this is this is a smudge kit. And 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 if and if I was listening to this, year, I, I wouldn't even, I even know a what a smudge kit so was. Business. Yeah, um, I have personally never used my own product. Uh, I am not the target audience. I just have a daughter <laughs> named Sage who's three years old. And I thought I'm going to start a brand because I want to, and I'm going to put my daughter's name on it because I can't. And then I was like, okay, cool. Now that I've got a brand name called age of sage, what am I going to sell? This is not the right way to do product business operations, but it's this how I did for it. Demonstration purposes. <laughs> right. Um, in fact, I would suggest to you that the best way to pick your products is to stick to what you know mm -hmm. and don't use any data. Uh, you know, for example, I'm a chess player. I got a chess set behind me and, and I am, you know, I was a national chess player growing up. I taught in over 200 elementary schools in Utah. I, I could, I could play a master in chess right now and have a, a shot at beating them. Oh, wow. right? So like, I know chess. Um, if I launched a chess product, I would have a gigantic edge over mm. everybody else. Just, just gigantic. Just because you understand it and the target person. I would know who buys it, why they buy it, you know, what makes the customer tick. Um, and, and, and then when Netflix comes out with Queen's Gambit and we see chess set sales go up over 800% in 90 days, I would be on top of it and would know exactly why and what's going on, right? So like mm -hmm. these are advantages that I would have if I were going to launch chess sets. Now, the reason I'm not going to do it is because it's a freaking over commoditized category that everybody and their dogs is in. So it's not a good category. But when you figure out what you understand and then you then go to the data to determine, can I sell chess sets? Can I sell mm -hmm. these things? You then get your answer. Um, so, so now we, we've, we've established that this marketing funnel is super important. The data is clear as night and day. It's free. It's in the search query performance report. Why wouldn't you go take action today? Like just 100% go take action. Yeah, so th this is interesting. So it definitely has my mind thinking. Now, just kind of first impression, and my my first impression of this is the. I'm going to get at least one out of five of those impressions. By the way, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Is that the? Uh, well, you're definitely part of this impression. Um, is that the data is a little different than some of the typical funnel? Like the general concepts are the same. Um, you know, because really, when you think about a funnel, you've got impressions, whether it's, you know, number of times a Facebook ad scrolls by someone or, you know, somebody drives past a billboard or they search for something on Amazon and they see the product, you know, all these different impression points. And then to what the next action is, the next action from impression here is the click. And then the click would be the sale. Here, you're able to monitor the in-between of the add to cart. Now, the percentage of the different percentages between add to cart and um, purchases was really just the fact that some fall off, but it wasn't percentage of purchases to add to cart. I guess you could so back that out in a spreadsheet if you wanted to, but that'd be kind of pointless because you can't really do much. With so it. so we, we know that the number of people that add to cart and purchase is going to shrink. That's just a 100% yeah. guarantee, not on every single product ever, but a pretty 100% guarantee we could pull up a thousand products and we would see that trend, right? So with that in mind, your job is to maintain as many of them as you can. And if your product can, can gain a market share at any one of these four levers, if you can gain market share at impressions, you're going to be seen by more people. If you gain an a market share on clicks, you're going to have more traffic to your listing. If you can gain market share on the add to carts, that means that you have a higher conversion rate. And if you can gain market share on purchases, 
that means that you have staying power compared to your competitors. Now, one of the things that people just kind of don't think about on a daily basis is what happens when you get to the add to cart page. When you hit that add to cart button, what shows up? Well, you often see other product ads. And so if your product, which is you've already won the click, you've already won the ad to cart, but then when they finally get to the mm. checkout page, they bail and buy somebody else's product. Why does that happen? Well, there could be all kinds of reasons, right? So like in classic marketing funnel 101 theory, off a, off a website, you have to solve two problems, mm -hmm. friction and anxiety. Mm -hmm. Friction would be like, I can't figure out where the add to cart button is, or right. I don't know what to do next. Amazon has solved friction. You right. literally have no control over friction. On no Amazon. one is better in the world. You can't am out Amazon this one. So, so with that in mind, that's half the theory out the door. You only need to worry about anxiety. Hmm. So when it comes to conversion improvements on Amazon, anxiety is the only thing you need to solve for. So why is somebody not converting on your product and is bailing and converting on somebody else's product? It's because they don't trust that the product will do what it can do. They think that they can get a better price somewhere else. They're just not 100% sure that you're going to solve the customer problem. So, so when you reframe these conversations with your team and you're trying to debate these things out, right? There's lots of great tools out there. You can run a pick food test, to A-B test your main photo to fix CTR. But it's a very difficult conversation to figure out how do I fix my conversion rate, hmm. right? And, and there's so many, you know, customer avatar questions and demographics. And, um, you know, if you, if you believe anything I've said today, you should have the smallest tent possible for your consumers. There is only enough room in here for the perfect customer. I am selling a particular product with a particular demographic, and I, I'm only selling to three-time divorced truck drivers or whatever it is, right? Pick one thing, build the tent for them. And guess what? If you do this, then the rest of the process becomes easier because now you know what kind of person to put in your images. Mm. Now you know uh, how to advertise and reach them. Now you know how to build a community. You can build a community for those three-time divorced truck drivers, and you know they have issues with hygiene. You know they're traveling all the time, and they don't have time for dating. And you have a laundry list of problems that this particular customer data set provides, right? So when you marry in Amazon's analytics to brand methodologies, you get better outcomes. You're going to increase your percentages. You're going to increase your impressions, your clicks, your add to carts, and your purchases. And that, sir, is the ICAP marketing funnel. I love it. I love it because there is a compounding effect for folks that are not familiar with these type of concepts that if you, if you keep all other aspects of the funnel consistent, if you can increase one by like 20%, then your output would increase by 20%. If you have two of them Correct. increased by 20%, it's not 40%, it's 44%. Your output would be on the other end. Um, because there is that compounding effect. And so wherever you can increase the number of impressions, you show more, you're going to, as long as they're clicking through at the same rates, you would have more sales on the back end as long as they're also purchasing. So understanding both, it's not just throwing more people to your listing and more impressions, but the more you understand them, that not the friction side, but the just understanding the general customer anxiety um, which is a good way to put that, um, the, the better off you're going to be in getting more sales and who, converting more sales. Who wants more orders? Everybody. I do, right? Yes. Like everybody. So on this particular keyword that we shared today, I had 21 orders during week 13 and I had 49 orders during week 20. So more than doubled for one keyword. That's 28 more orders for one keyword. Mm. Now, now, if you repeat this process and do this on dozens and dozens of keywords, we're getting into the hundreds, if not thousands of orders. So, so there's a scalable methodology here. It's highly repeatable. Scientific method applies. You can replicate my results yourself. I love doing this. Uh, you know, A couple of years ago, I, I convinced the entire Amazon community that A-plus content indexes, same scientific method applied then as it applies now. Test it yourself. 
you will see the results. Love it. So if somebody wanted to learn more from you, where would they go? So you can find us at myamazonguy.com. We have a YouTube channel and, and follow me on LinkedIn. We're posting content all day long, multiple posts per day, multiple videos, just circulating everything we know about Amazon. I'm on a mission to help anybody in the world who has a computer sell on Amazon. And wow. so it's a big mission and it's never going to be done, right? <laughs> yeah. That's how you know you have a good infinite mission statement. I learned that from the business book, uh, uh, The uh, Infinite Game. I, well, I might be misquoting that now off the top of my head. Um, <clears throat> other, other business books while we're on that topic, uh, The Road yes. Less Stupid, best business book I've ever read. And it's a recent edition. Road Less library. Stupid. Who's that the, by? The Road Less Stupid. And, and I could not believe how down to earth, but also... Um, just a masterpiece of a business book. I haven't heard of this one. So, so I mean, yeah, a little by, bit more by about Keith it. Cunningham. Uh, and, 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 and basically you got a guy who's, he's, he's an older South, Southern gentleman who's basically main thesis argument is if you could just roll back three bad financial decisions, how much more money would you have? Mm. And he's like, here's all the things you need to do in business, not to make stupid decisions. And, and by the way, you need to schedule thinking time. That's the whole high level book. But then the, like the tactical level, like going in the weeds and here's why this matters and here's how it impacted me and shares my experience. I'm just an incredible book. I, any Amazon seller will find value from it. Okay. Definitely uh, recommend folks go check out Road Less Stupid. But then if they wanted to check you out, where would they go? So youtube.com slash my Amazon guy, my Amazon uh, And if you guys want my free SEO phase one, go to my Amazon slash SEO. You can download it for free. I'm just jotting down a note for myself to put all of that down below. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the uh, description below. If you're listening to the audio version of the podcast, it'll be in the show notes. Thanks so, for having me on, Kevin. I really appreciate joining you. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thanks, Stephen.